Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cravecast. I'm your host, Eric Mack, live from CNET's always busy House New Mexico Bureau. Joining me live in the CNET studios in San Francisco are Bonnie Burton, Jeff Sparkman, and behind the controls, we have <laughs> Stephen Beecham. Howdy. It's our skeleton crew today. Uh, folks, you ever feel like there's just too much to watch? It's because it's because there is. There totally is. Uh, and so today we're here to help you sift through countless binge watching choices and plan what's worth making a trip to the theater to see in the coming weeks. So uh, on tap today, we're going to chat about what's literally been keeping us up at night with our eyes fused to our streaming screens. Uh, for some of us, it's House of Cards or Daredevil. Uh, Jeff is totally hooked on The Flash, from what I understand. And um, we're also going to... Uh, get amped for Game of Thrones starting next month. Yeah. And we'll get into yeah. <laughs> Whoa, geez. We'll get into all of it and hopefully have some time left over to talk about some upcoming uh films in the theater. Uh Batman v Superman coming out on uh Thursday and Friday, depending on where you are. And then we've got new Ghostbusters and Independence Day movies and much more. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get to all of it. But let's let's start with uh House of Cards, uh, yes. the one that's been out for a yes. little bit. Oh, before we get going, you can also join in the conversation. Uh, we are live on YouTube, on the CNET uh, YouTube channel, and also on Livestream.com. Was that Livestream? Livestream.com slash The Cravecast. Boom. There Boom. you go. Boom. Oh, and I, I'm monitoring the, uh, the Twitter feed at Crave. You can also uh, send us any questions or comments there as well. So anyway, House of Cards. Uh, so this one's been out for a couple of weeks now, season four. And, you know, I, I did a little bit of uh, writing a couple of weeks ago on Crave uh, about, um, you know, what would happen if uh, Francis Underwood were to actually uh, be a part of the 2016 presidential election in the real world, which is arguably crazier. Is that, I mean, it's actually, uh, I don't think it's hands down. It's, I mean, uh, yeah. take away all the behind the scenes murder. Let's just take out all the behind the scenes murder. We ha we don't know. We don't know if any murders <laughs> have been committed in real life. So let's just put it back on the table. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, I've been listening, I've been reading a lot of um, commentaries lately from uh, journalists who are on the trail with, with Trump or who go to the Trump events and how at yeah. times they actually fear for their lives. Yeah, those rallies, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I did an article for Crave on how to make your own. Um, I like how Steven's like quit hiding behind, <laughs> <it. Stop> behind, <laughs> behind this, the mic. This mic is like crazy <laughs> contraption. Um, I did an article about uh, Scam School. Brian Brushwood and his friends made a do, do it yourself gas mask and people are like why would you ever use this and now after all the trump rallies i'm like bingo that's what you can use it yeah. for if you're going to go to a trump rally whether you're protesting or you're there to show your support you, and you don't have a gas mask because not all of us have them in our homes uh <laughs> you can make one out of a soda can or a soda bottle and um some charcoal and duct tape and myth busters your way into a trump rally i guess DIY for the Trump apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you're right. It's like, it's funny. I was watching how I binge watched House of Cards last night, the most recent season. And I was like, you know, there's a lot of parallels, like, you know, data mining for candidates. And I'm sure that goes on. I'm sure there's like a lot of sketchy stuff on how they try to figure out, you know, what we as a voting populace want to hear. But then the more I watch Trump, the more and the more I listen to what he's saying, the more I realize that he's I don't think he has a speechwriter. No, does he? he doesn't. No. <laughs> he doesn't. I no, think he doesn't have a teleprompter. I think right. it's just the best improv class. Like I think he's just winging it and he's yeah. just saying whatever he, he wants to say and that's why every time he talks about the Great Wall of China, he keeps or not Great Wall of China, Great Wall of Mexico <laughs> that we'll be getting, the Trump Wall. He keeps changing how much it's going to cost. Because I think he just forgets yeah. what he said another thing. So um, it's it's interesting to watch a candidate, and it's very similar to what we went through with Ross Perot, who was like this you know business guy but kind of loony. It's like what it's weird. It's like watching an SNL skit but for real. And this could be our lives for four years. So I mean I don't want to joke about it too much. That's funny. So yeah, I mean. You know, it's interesting, and I've also heard the the writers of Veep talk about this. That what's been going on with this election actually makes it tougher to write fiction about politics because mm -hmm. truth is totally stranger than fiction. And I, I definitely had that reaction watching um, season four of House of Cards. Is that like particularly where they're on the campaign trail with the uh, with 
except for a few events that we won't totally spoil. Um, it's really actually fairly boring yeah. <laughs> especially com compared to what's going on now. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I think it, it, it's interesting. Reality has become way stranger than fiction for, for the time being, at least in the realm of uh, politics. And, you know, I, I feel like House of Cards hasn't been quite as – um, it hasn't been quite as viral for season four, and I, yeah. I almost wonder if that has anything to do with it. You know what's interesting is like one of their plot points is that uh, in that alternative universe where House of Cards lives is that there's a gas shortage like we had in the 70s uh, in the United States where you know people were lined up, all their cars were lined up at the gas pumps, and gas pumps were constantly out of gas, and people were trying to siphon gas from each other for hundreds of dollars and whatever. They, they do that, but I think most people and millennials sure won't remember any of this. So it's like it's a weird callback to a time for their viewership that probably doesn't even remember that time. And then, you know, it's not timely because gas is cheaper now than it's ever been. So it's like I just it doesn't feel like something it doesn't feel like a ripped from the headlines kind of situation. Uh, I mean, there's NSA stuff for sure, right. um, which is very um doable as far as like that's something that we could see candidates kind of stealing our information that way but i don't know you're right it just feels kind of off well and the rush i mean the russia stuff like the role that that uh, the, the character who's basically putin yeah he, he plays that that's pretty realistic although it's like except that guy's actually smarter than putin and also it's the same actor that played the villain in the most recent uh season of sherlock um, you just for, called down the Russian spear fishing cats. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, he's he's actually smarter than and more. Um, he's not as he doesn't think of himself as a god like Putin does. I think Putin definitely considers himself a, an icon. Oh yeah. Um, so I don't know, and, and I don't know. I mean, I liked watching House of Cards. I'll watch it all the time. It's just not as topical as I had hoped. Yeah. Based yeah, on what I hear I'm that. seeing in the in the trailers that they've been putting out, it's just a bunch of people like giving each other dirty looks. <laughs> <laughs> Stink like, eyes. That's, that's yeah. Pretty much what I got from it. I mean, there's still violence. Don't worry about that. I mean, there's. <laughs> I'm worried. There's still sex and violence. Uh, not as uh creepy as maybe other seasons of House of Cards, but there's, it's 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 still got it. You know, Spacey's still great. It's. I don't know. Robin Wright is still one of my favorite characters. And this is all very Macbeth-like still. So there's all these Shakespearean undertones, and you can use your English degree in ways you right. never thought you'd mm -hmm. use it. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I still liked it. It's just, you're right. It's not as exciting and interesting and bizarre as maybe our real-life election. It's, it's like the last season of Game of Thrones that was kind of boring, and they're building up to something <laughs> big at the end. You know? God, I hope there's dragons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My wife goes crazy watching uh, Robin Wright in that show because she's constantly dressed in what would appear to be the most uncomfortable outfits ever. <laughs> you know what? It's interesting uh, because she actually, though, she has a pajama line on her Twitter. So if really? you go to Robin Wright's Twitter feed, when it's not all feed the children, fresh water charities or whatever, I'm totally downplaying. I don't mean to. She's got a whole like, <laughs> she's got a whole PJ line. So she's got like these really expensive silk pajamas. And I think she wears them in House of Cards. I think she, she does. Her, she should use her own product because in one episode, she actually takes a nap on a couch wearing high heels. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Why well, do that? You're not, you're not I never supposed understood to do that. that. Well, no, but if you wear high heels, the first thing you take off the minute you get into the door, and I'm just speaking for some women, not all women, is you take off the high heels and you take off your bra instantly, instantly. Was, is this her? This is her uh, pajama line here. I think so. I think it's like a charity, like it goes to like a good cause. I don't know. Yeah. See, pajama line, sexy. Sexy. <laughs> Jeff, have you been watching House of Cards? I have not actually. You're, you're, you're a smart man with, with, more, <laughs> with more to do, but clearly. Mm, uh, I wouldn't say more to do. It's just I'm still <laughs> catching up on stuff I've, that I missed before. I think I've binged watched everything that's new on Netflix, and mm -hmm. now I'm just waiting for the next month. This is, this is what happens <laughs> is I watch everything right away, and then I get stuck watching really bad horror films for the next two weeks because there's nothing left to watch. Or military documentaries. Like, I know a lot about Hitler. I don't really want to. I like to watch that stuff, too. Well, yeah. a, lot of the, a lot of the stuff that I watch... I'm not actually watching. I'm just kind of listening to yeah. in the background. I don't really have a whole lot of time where I'm just like where I can watch something that I need to pay attention to. Right. So like I can watch, you know, sitcoms and, and okay. stuff like that. that, makes sense. that makes <laughs> or sense. or rewatch stuff, but like there's stuff that I want like this, I want to watch it. Right. 
So I'm like, well, I got to do it when I actually have time to pay attention. I will say if you're paying attention to House of Cards a little too much, you'll notice some. I I noticed this. I didn't want to tweet it because I didn't want it to sound weird. But there's a few characters on House of Cards that are guys that are wearing a lot of guy liner. Oh, yeah. There's there's like (laughs) the head of the press secretary is wearing eyeliner, like guy liner, like right underneath his eyes. And you can tell it on quite a few characters. And I don't know if it's the makeup person at House of Cards. It's like... We need to define your eyes more, but it makes it look like half of them are in a goth band. So <laughs> if the House of Cards makeup lady's listening, you can tone it down with the guy liner. We know we know they're serious. Their stink eye doesn't look even more evil with, with eyeliner. So season five is the goth band. <laughs> God, I hope so. Mar- I, uh, Marilyn Manson runs. <laughs> my So my, my final thing I want to say about House of Cards is I was a little irritated that, like, as is trendy in a uh, TV and streaming drama right now. They did the one thing which drives me crazy, which is they killed off the one like noble, likable character. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which drove me a little bit nuts, but uh, we won't we won't totally spoil that. You can you can yeah. maybe you guess. can try to guess who the only <laughs> noble character is in that series. Yeah, yeah. He's, it's, he, it's dead. It's a dead person now. Totally. Yeah. So what about Daredevil? This is one oh, I yes. haven't watched that everyone tells me I need to. Yes. So what what am I missing? Okay. First of all, I'm just gonna pitch this out there. Rosario Dawson as the nurse Claire who shows up in Daredevil shows up in Jessica Jones she's probably going to show up in Luke Cage she's going to show up in defense she's going to show up everywhere um she's always the voice of reason in all these shows <laughs> I really wish Marvel would just make a show just about her like, how underrated I, I, is that is Rosario Dawson she's anyone? not overrated at all she's awesome. oh, underrated I'm oh underrated her. yeah so the the breakout stars of this show of this season are actually not Daredevil. It's the Punisher and Elektra. And right. those are the two characters that are brought into this season. And they steal it. They steal the whole season. Like, I was totally obsessed with, with uh, Punisher, really obsessed with Elektra. And they did it great. They, like, basically redeemed the horrible Jennifer Garner Elektra movie. <laughs> totally redeemed, obviously, Affleck's Daredevil movie. That was horrible. Um, but they did that already with season one. But Electra is really amazing. And I think this is going to bring a lot more fans to her table. And the Punisher, I mean, that's been hit or miss character on so many movies that I've lost count. And this is, I feel like, the first time they really showed the Punisher the way comic book fans have probably been waiting for him so to be shown. So this is better than the Dolph Lundgren version? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I like, <laughs> hey, I like Dolph, but I'm just oh, saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there have been other Punisher movies besides that one. Yeah, that's just the one we like to make fun of. But no, that's just the only one that I saw. Yeah, but I, I will say that if you're a fan of Punisher, watch it, because it's definitely great. But Elektra, she is amazing. The actress that plays her is such a great, uh, I mean, she's great at choreography. She's great, just a believable character. You know, you, you get sunk into her backstory immediately. Um, the only thing that I have problems with is Foggy, the other lawyer who's his, you know, buddy, buddy friend. And then the girl, Karen, who's the other lawyer that falls for him, the blonde. I get a little annoyed with that. <laughs> I, I'm a little, I, with superhero shows, you always have the regular girl who's a lawyer or journalist who falls in love with the superhero but doesn't know he's a superhero or doesn't know his alter ego is a superhero or whatever. And they always try to change him. You know, they're always like, you don't have to fight this fight. You know, and it's a superhero. Of course he does. That's what he does. It's his job. Get him. Get him, Dirta. Look at her. Hungry? Hot. <laughs> Every time I walk up those stairs. I... Yeah. So anyway, you should watch it. I mean, and Punisher's great. Punisher's a little, it's hard for me to watch because it felt a little too much like a very extended Law and Order episode because a lot of the episodes take place in a courtroom. Um, but there's great fighting scenes and there's ninjas. So, you know. Oh, yeah. You can't go wrong. Yeah. Ninjas. Oh, and Fisk is in it. Fisk comes back a part oh, right of on. it. So those Vincent D'Onofrio Kingpin fans, don't worry. He's in it, too. So, I mean, it's got something for everybody, I think. I just, personally, I just get tired of superhero self-righteousness where they're all like, you know, you're not allowed to kill people. I'm like, well, they're going to come after you over and over and over and try to kill you. They're soldiers. Soldiers sort of get a pass, I think, for killing. 
because that's what they're supposed to do. <laughs> it's not like you go into war and try to rehab the enemy. You go into right. war and you kill the enemy. That's what a war is. And for me, that's what Hell's Kitchen is. It's a war at this point. It is a war. The Avengers have made all of New York a war zone. So now it's a war. <laughs> you Good can job think, ruining you it, You can Avengers. make the Avengers and it doesn't matter because they're going to war each other in civil war. So there's going to be more war and more war. And it's just annoying to watch superheroes fight each other. To me, it's like, you should focus on the bad guys, but then I know we'd have a lot less comics if they didn't have infighting. I have a question about superheroes. Do they all have to, when they jump, do they have to land like this? Is this the rule? Oh, Here, the superhero see. jump. Yes. And then they <laughs> land like that. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. And from Confirmed. higher, the higher the distance, the better. Like, <laughs> Jessica Jones does that. They did that in Underworld, too. So vampires, they fall like that. Oh, yeah. No one belly flops. There's no, like, falling on the ass. Well, that's, that's, not until how, I that's get how you superhero. fall if you're a superhero. Does Deadpool fall like that? I feel like he's kind of klutzy. He called it out in his movie. Does he? Mm -hmm. So he, how does he fall in the movie? Well, no, not that he fell. He just he called out the superhero. Line. Oh, right, the stance. <laughs> I feel like that would be a good yoga class. Like oh, yeah. it would be like superhero stance, and you could really work, you know, your core. But uh, anyway, it so seems if, yogic. Yeah, it seems yeah. very yoga like. But I, I, you should watch Daredevil. And uh, it just makes me even more excited for Luke Cage, which makes me more excited for hopefully another season of Jessica Jones and then Defenders. I don't know. I'm all Marvel these days, but we'll get to DC in a little bit. But I, I really liked this. Though I have to admit, there the middle of Daredevil gets a little boring. So if you don't mind fast-forwarding through some of those jury trials, then you'll be fine. So I had a hard time sticking with Jessica Jones. Do you think it's going to be hard for me to stick with Daredevil then? Why Why didn't you like Jessica Jones? What was the main, what was the hardest part for you uh, to my, stick through? My wife didn't want to watch it, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. That's a different issue. That's a marriage uh, issue. I don't know. The first episode seemed a little slow and we just never. Well, yeah, back. the first episode seems slow and everything. You have to give it some chance. Do I? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, what about what about you guys, Jeff, Stephen? Have you guys, are you guys fans? Uh, it's on my list of things to watch. Once <laughs> Jessica Jones up on everything else. No, I, I'm not. I probably won't end up watching it. What? For I mean, I got, I got actually, I got like about halfway through, and then like I had to like do things, and then. So I, oh. <laughs> I know. I don't know. Maybe reality. I'm too much of a Marvel fan that I, I, I called off life just to freaking watch all of it at once, so I wouldn't get any spoilers on Twitter. So. When Daredevil season two came out, I'm like, well, that's what I'm doing for the next day. <laughs> so I just watched all of it at once. So, you know, it's weird. So far, I, we, we go and we watch all the Marvel movies, mm. uh, but we haven't been able to get into any of the TV series yet. I, I don't all, know. It, have you gotten into the TV? Like, have you gotten into uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? No. Oh, interesting. Because there's a lot of crossover. I mean, the cool thing with Marvel is they use the same actors. Unlike DC, who don't. So, like, DC's all over the place with who's playing Batman, who's playing... Like, Gotham doesn't really intersect that well with the movies, and that doesn't intersect very well with other projects. So, sure. the only thing I'm seeing intersect is going to be the new Batman versus Superman with Wonder Woman, and then that shows the same actress that's obviously Gail, Gail Godot. Godot? It's French, Godot, so I know I think, I'm going to yeah. say it wrong. Um, she's in the obviously she's in the Wonder Woman bat or Wonder Woman movie that's coming out. Well, but, let's jump on that because that's that's coming out on Friday, Thursday, some yeah, places. Yeah, the Batman I think. versus Superman is yeah. Right, and so Jeff and I were talking about this um, on Slack a little bit yesterday about how you know in in our culture over the last decade, more than the last decade since the eighties, like yeah. Batman seems to get all the uh, attention, all the uh, the buzz. Mm. Uh, and Superman, like, I don't know, it doesn't... Well, Superman used much... to, with Christopher Reeves. Exactly. Well, Christopher Reeve was Superman. Superman was the cool kid. And then Batman kind of took over with all the different incarnations of Batman, whether you're a Keaton or a Val Kilmore fan or... I mean, Batman else? got a serious... Somebody's got to um, be the Clooney, Clooney Batman fan. Yeah, right. if you're a Clooney fan. Yeah. I mean, everyone's got their favorite Batman. Keaton did it the best. He, I mean, I am pro Keaton just because normally, naturally, he's kind of like Batman. <laughs> you know, if you've ever heard Keaton get interviewed, he kind of talks like Batman normally, and he's very sardonic and scowly. I don't know people. So I've been reading reviews 
not really reviews, but Twitter reactions of people that saw the screening. Uh, I think it was like last night or the night before last. Um, and a lot of people were still under, you know, don't you dare say what happens in the movie, but they all were tweeting what they thought of it. And uh, there's been really positive response. So. That's good. That's good. How do you feel about Wonder Woman not getting top billing? I mean, she's just kind of Honestly, an extra character. Honestly, I think marketing did that on purpose because I am kind of convinced she steals the movie. And it looks that way from the trailer. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I really get the impression just her character and the way that she's in the movie and how she just shows up and kicks ass. I honestly think she steals the movie and they don't marketing does not want to play that up too much because they have two top billing stars that are probably kind of pissed. Like and if I was Affleck or Caval, Cavill, Cavalli, whatever, I'd be upset that Wonder Woman's getting top billing from this woman who's relatively an unknown, unknown actress. But honestly, just from the trailer, I mean, and I'm a huge, I'm a huge Batman fan. I'm wearing a Batman shirt that probably says "Stupid American," and I don't even know it's in Japanese, <laughs> but I'm wearing it anyway. Um, I'm a huge Batman fan, but honestly, I've been waiting so long, like ever since Linda Carter, 1970s Wonder Woman, for a real Wonder Woman I could believe in, and I am so excited for this, and I'm so excited for her her movie that will eventually come out. Um, she just looks amazing in this. Is just, she in any of these trailers? Yeah, she's seen. in the battle yeah. scene. Like I did an article for Crave on her actual battle scene where you can see footage of her using her 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 bracelets of submission, which are those great golden bracelets that deflect not only bullets but small missiles. Nice. Just which in is case. Handy to have. Just in case you wanted to know. Um Yeah, I don't know if they show I think they show her towards the end of this trailer where they're like into this trailer hey who's the chick I'm she with you i thought it. she was with she yeah I think it was so to the end. lack of um to the lack of superman gravitas that we were talking about jeff i mean it yeah. seems like this is kind of another i mean you had you had smallville you had like you know kind of some some b-listers playing superman and this kind of seems to be in the same tradition i mean Batman is a total A-list actor, and I honestly don't know who the guy playing Superman is. It oh, he's the like... guy that played Superman in the other Superman movies. Is so, it? Yeah. 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 It's the same guy. Yeah. It's okay. the same dude. You From know, the so... recent reboots. Yeah. And... Which were not fantastic. No. Let's yeah. see if they show her. They should show her towards the end here. Yeah, it's coming or up. Or not. I don't know if they show her in the first trailer. They do, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. I haven't seen any of these, by the way. There she is. There's the... Oh, yeah. There we go. With you, I thought she was with you. Ugh. I thought she was. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Wonder Woman's rolling her eyes, going, "I got this, boys." Yeah, yeah. she's gonna don't worry, freaking I'll be steal this. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Me, but, I mean, get behind the shield. Get behind the Amazonian shield that's gonna save both of your asses, alien I mean, and human. <laughs> what an amazing like image like swap. I feel like because if you go back to the '60s and the Adam West series, Batman's like this really goofy, cartoony character. Yeah. And now, and now, like well, Superman's even before that, like, even what? even before that, in the Batman serials in the forties, yeah, um, he was kind of, I mean, he had a loose fitting cotton outfit. I mean, I guess Lycra wasn't invented yet, but <laughs> they, uh, you know, he's always been a cartoon, more of a cartoon type character, and you don't get like more of a rig. I don't think we get a real Batman till Keaton, honestly. Yeah. Keaton sure. shows a kind of a more of a human Batman, not like a. Not like a cartoony character of Batman, you know, um, we, and that's that's why I think it started off that way, and then it just started getting a little too weird, and then of course you made a little too weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, you know, and then we got the Nolan Batman, which was like the gritty, dark Batman, and I think everyone everyone really they either liked it or they don't. It was polarizing, you know. You either really loved him or you really were like, eh, this is a little too creepy. Batman Begins, I could not stay awake through it. I oh, tried well, watching yeah. it two times and I fell asleep. Really? I swear. Okay. I swear. But, and um, then, I mean, if you watch the animated Batman series, which is literally a cartoon, they actually... That's pretty dark, too. But you know what? It's really dark. And yeah. they actually expand those characters. And the Wonder Woman animated series is amazing. It's so good. And those actually stay pretty close to the comics. So, But then we got the reboot, so who knows? So I don't know. I... I it's interesting. I'm 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 gonna go see this movie, and I never go see movies in theaters. The last one I went to was Deadpool, so I'll go see this. <laughs> What's but... your take, Jeff? You're on Team Superman. Yeah. yeah well, like, okay. My whole problem, uh, 
So I've, if I'm gonna like pick a side, I'm I'm obviously gonna be Team Superman. <laughs> um, but not necessarily the Superman that's in this movie, uh, based on the last movie, which I was really disappointed in because like, I mean like yeah, I'm of a certain age, and it's not just the Christopher Reeve movie ser- series because I mean. Superman 3, Superman 4, those were Oh, come on. Pretty... Superman 3 is great. It's a killer computer. You have Richard Pryor, Richard Pryor. and a Pryor. giant foamy cowboy hat. And the robot, the robot. <laughs> you know what? That's the actually. The cyborg robot. When the oh, Jeff make, leave. When the woman becomes a robot, I used <laughs> that to was... so freaked oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, that was scary. And Superman 3 was the movie that introduced me to a uh, Singapore sling. Which... Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like Superman 3 is sort of like the Star Wars holiday special for Marvel. Mm, no, Superman 4 is more like the, the holiday special. Oh, yeah. I always that forget about is that. just like a pile of ass. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but like, I don't know, like growing like the, the one of the very first books that I ever read when I was a little kid uh, was the, the Superman, the official Superman quiz book. So it had like all the like mundane details about Superman. And like I was like four and I just wanted to read everything at that point so I just absorbed everything and then I watched the super friends and just like I really identified like as I got you know older uh, I found that I was more and more identifying with Clark Kent because you know it's basically not that I have superpowers that I need to hide from people (laughs) what are you trying to tell us Jeff so far as you know (laughs) but like you know like the stuff that you know because like being a nerd before Mm. anybody gave a crap about you know following nerd things, um, you know, always having to hide the things that I was interested in and just kind of like be like this other person just so people, you know, wouldn't notice. Um, also, I was kind of clumsy, wore glasses. Um, so, you know, he was faking the clumsy thing. though. I right? know. Okay. But like, OK, so like, <laughs> but like I used to know things like like Superman was like, you know, like three inches. He appeared to be three inches taller than Clark Kent, because when he was Superman, he would stand up straight oh. as Clark Kent. He would like slouch hunch over. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. But like the thing to me, Superman is more of an, like an ideal, like I don't want to see a Superman who would be like doing the kind of crap that I would do if I had superpowers, you know, like if somebody was a douchebag to me in a bar and I go jack up his truck when he's not looking, go throw it into some power lines. To me, if you have superpowers, that's kind of a dick move, you know? Well, he does that, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in Man of Steel, he does that. And I'm like, well, but that's... he's like a teenager, though, to, right? To be, he's like but real young still. guy. Yeah, and also... I do stupid things when you're young. I didn't. <laughs> to be to be fair, when Superman... When, when Lois Lane asks Superman to give up his powers to be normal... She doesn't ask him. He well, volunteered to okay, do that. Okay, so he volunteers... He actually and, didn't ask her, which is also, I think, kind of a dick move. Okay. Well, I think Superman's <laughs> kind of a jerk because I've always thought he was a jerk because he's kind of, he's, he is, I don't, I'm not against aliens, but he just, the fact that his disguise, he chose a nerd bugged me because I felt like he was making fun of humanity, kind of like the Kill Bill speech well, in where the, Bill's like. Originally, that was his, his father's suggestion. Really? He said that you have, his adoptive father. Yeah, uh, Jonathan Kent. He, he said, said be that a you, nerd. Well, no, he said you have to be everything Superman isn't, so okay. people aren't looking at you like that. But you have to be a pretty crap journalist to only be have the glasses be. I mean, come on, Lois. I mean, I've dated guys <laughs> that have glasses and they take off the glasses, and I'm like, who are you? I'm not like that stupid. Well, yeah, but like, it also, can't just be the cape. No, also part of the thing is like, you know, I always thought it was like a kind of crap disguise, but. <laughs> you got to kind of think like, you know, if there were such people around, okay. like, and, and you like, you know, like if there was a guy who was roughly my height for a superhero, which would just be pathetic for him, um, Aww. you wouldn't think that I'm a superhero because like, you don't think that other people are superheroes. You just assume right. they're a superhero. That's what they do. Why would a superhero like pretend to be somebody else? Well, it is interesting because Superman's costume, actually, that's him. That's yeah. normal super. Superman in costume is him normally. His costume is actually Clark Kent. Depending on the writer at, yeah. at which times, yeah. So, I mean, that's an interesting thing, too, to think about. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I just didn't need to see Superman be dark and gritty. I'm just kind yeah. of like... Well, he's not supposed to be. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, he's supposed to be, like, you know, somebody you look up to. And, right. That's what, yeah, this is and what like happens when modern writers get a hold of a franchise. Well, like no, that. the problem is everyone wants to make everything dark and gritty because well, they I think that's was, what yeah. people want. They think that's what fans want. I mean, that was the problem 
that Star Wars had for a while mm-hmm. too is everyone just wanted mass murder and dark Darth Vader movies and they're like, well, maybe not. Maybe well, there's a lot of gore some... in the Star Wars. That's like, true. I well. watched the first one recently and the guy's arm gets cut off. Oh, a new yeah. on the Every time yeah. there's somebody loses an arm. By the way, when I worked for Lucasfilm, I still, every year when we'd have our new, like, pitches of what we thought should be on the store shelves, I always said, you know, we really should just have arms. (laughs) We should just be, like, an action figure of an arm that you could buy just the arm or you could buy just Uncle Owen and Aunt Bruce scorched bodies. (laughs) Oh, my God. You just get a bag of Yeah, that scene, too, is pretty heavy. That's why I'm still there, clearly. But... (laughs) No, I, I agree with your what you're saying about Superman. I don't know. It's like it just I guess it depends on the Superman wasn't movie. Wasn't like the origin of Superman wasn't he made for World War 1 or World War 2? Well, like he a was created machine, He was created much. by two Jewish creators to yeah. make fun of the super race that Hitler was kept saying oh, okay. he wanted to yeah. build. So it was a propaganda so it was a thing. Superman. And he, you know, it was well, American, he you know red, white and blue. You know what's interesting if you watch the old really old Superman cartoons from the 40s, it's a oh, lot I was of just showing anth- those to my It's just him kicking like Hitler's butt. But, like, it's just all <laughs> war cartoons. It's like he's yeah. either, you know, in the Pacific realm, like, kicking the Japanese just from like, here to just, wherever. Just like Bugs or, Bunny. Yeah, or Germany. <laughs> Bugs Bunny was doing the same yeah. thing. Yeah, and Lois Lane is actually, like, a really smart, like, World War Two like, mm-hmm. like uh, I don't want to say a Bletchley girl, because that's, <laughs> that's the Enigma Code girls in the oh, UK. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, she's, you know... It's it's like she everybody, had Moxie. Everybody exactly. Everybody had Moxie. Everybody was like for the war effort. So it was a totally different. It was a totally different time though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a time when a whole country got behind a war. Or <laughs> now you would not see like SpongeBob, Iraqi, Iran, Afghanistan. Just Where are we forward. at now? I'm sure it's wait somewhere forward. on the internet. But I'm yeah, a horrible in person. Yeah. You wouldn't see a SpongeBob hacker. Th- Maybe a SpongeBob. No, but no SpongeBob ISIS. No. There would be no, none of that. No. None YouTube's of that. YouTube's working on it. Trust me. Uh, yeah. There's with Batman versus Superman. I think there is some really interesting uh, opportunities for social commentary that I'm sure they're not taking. But like, if you look at, uh, I mean, Superman versus Batman is literally like competing versions of the American dream. Like, what's more, what's more all American? The like alien who becomes like an all American like farm well, boy and journalist or the billionaire yeah. uh, like mogul. Well it's, really... it's, it's also xenophobic. I mean the whole thing xenophobic it's like how dare an alien come down and become a god. You know, the whole there's even a false god thing in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Like don't uh you know follow false gods. So religion's brought into it, xenophobia is brought into it. Um and then there's just I just I don't I don't know. It's like a rich guy telling me not to follow an alien. It's like, what are my choices here? Like, I'm gonna follow Wonder Woman because she's <laughs> she's an Amazon. She's royalty, but at least she her sole purpose in life was to come here and help us. It wasn't to like avenge her dead parents, you know, murder in an alley. And it wasn't some weird. She had to escape her planet because it was being blown up. She just left on her own accord to help us. And we stick her in trailer barely. Well, she did. <laughs> she did have to like return a guy who crashed near their island. But yeah. Yeah, but whatever. That's yeah. been downplayed. That's, I think it's actually well, been no, changed it's, entirely. Actually, it's going to be in the Wonder Woman movie that's coming out because oh, Chris, Chris Pine. Pine plays that character, mm-hmm. and it's set in the forties. I thought it was set in or thirties, twenties. God damn. I don't pay attention. One of those years 20s. that has, ends in a zero. Twenties, twenties, thirties. I don't know. Downton, it's not Downton Abbey time. No. I don't know. I'm a, ho- I'm a horrible girl representative on this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything that I should be knowing about. What else are we going to talk about? Well, let's wrap up the the, the um, comic superhero section. And uh, okay. Jeff, tell us about The Flash. You're, are yeah. you totally caught up on The Flash? Uh, yeah, I'm caught up. Actually, uh, there's a new episode tonight. So uh, they had been on a, a break for like almost a month, I want to say. After the last episode, and they had, you know, a couple of, you know, fairly major revelations in that at the end of that episode. Uh, from the preview for this week's episode for tonight, it doesn't look like they're necessarily following up on that yet, but they might just be holding that. And there's a crossover too. with Supergirl, right? Yeah, that's coming up next week, I think. Yeah, that's not, I, I like Supergirl. So yeah. I'm just, yeah. Oh, oh, on Supergirl, you? I gotta say yeah, this. Okay. I yeah. did appreciate, um, I think it was last week's episode of Supergirl uh, with the red kryptonite thing going on. Yeah. They gave a little shout out to a scene in Superman 3, which I thought was hysterical. Yes, yes. 
She's, Say I, it. I'm, explain it. Oh, it was just like she's just pissed off sitting in a bar, and she's like dumps out a bowl of peanuts and starts flicking them and breaking bottles in the bar. And I'm like, wow, they went there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because that happened cool. in Superman. Yeah. Too. It's interesting to see some of the show. And uh, are you watching Arrow too? No. Okay, because there's I don't know if there's any more crossovers between Arrow and Flash happening. They just had one. There, uh, yeah, I did uh, see fairly recently. Trailer. Did they? Okay. And mm -hmm. then are you watching Le Legends of Tomorrow? Yeah, I'm watching that as well. Okay. How do you like that? It's pretty good so far. I feel like. I feel like they it could be a like a little bit crazier because like I was I was talking to my brother about this and and like it seems like the way that they've done like the Flash where it's like you know you got a relatively slow build but then like mid season everything just goes crazy and it just goes faster and faster and faster and i was kind of expecting them to do something sort of like that and it just kind of it's a little bit slower which is you know which is fine right. but i was just kind of like with all the the possibilities that they have it's it i was just expecting more like kind of like crazy stuff to be going on but yeah. i dig it so far it's pretty cool cool yeah i was just wondering about that because i haven't started watching that yet because i feel like i have to watch all of them in order not, to understand all of really. them. Not really. I mean, there's, there's, it's, it's fairly standalone. Because I, I broke up say. with Arrow because of the Felicity Arrow shipping. Oh right. And I was right. just like, ugh, I hate that relationship so much. I can't watch it. So I just broke up with it. But I, I don't know. It's like I, it's hard because there's so much great stuff to watch. I mean, you have all these great DC shows, but then you've also got Marvel shows, and you've got like Agents of Shield and. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least with Netflix, you can just binge it all at once and be done. See, I think that's why I'm not catching up with stuff is because I could be doing that. Right. But it's like I need, you know, for, for that stuff, I need the actual time to watch it's it. It's called not sleeping. I already do that. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but like, you know, like with the DC shows, it's like, you know, an hour yeah. once a week on various days. And I'm like, I can usually spring for that. I don't know which is worse because I feel like if it's spread out, the, the chances of you being spoiled on social media is a lot less than if it's all in one mm -hmm. and everyone's racing to watch everything that's like the Netflix seasons oh, yeah, that are all yeah. at once because they don't want to start seeing the weird hashtags or the spoilers. Mm -hmm. or I mean, I mentioned something about, you know, um, how I, I think Electra stole the show, and that's all I said on Twitter. And someone's mm -hmm. like, "Spoilers!" And I'm like, "No, it's like, not." No, that was like that was <laughs> in the not, promo. She's in the promo, but there are very sensitive people out there on Twitter who th who don't even watch trailers anymore because they're so worried that trailers give too much of a movie away or too much of a show away. And so I have to be kind of careful what I say, or I just warn them: just mute me for the next month. And then unmute me in April. I know it's it's April almost to the point where right. like you're kind of like, should I even mention this show exists? Yeah, because somebody's gonna you know get pissed I, off. I I, I warn my social media followers if you're gonna follow me and you haven't watched this show, maybe you should mute me till you watch the show. Yeah, and that way you don't you don't unfollow me, but you won't see all my. I can't believe this happened, but I don't really spoil. Like I don't give away stuff that happens in a show that's specific. I just say I like a character. And I don't bring up characters that were dead that come back to life or something like yeah. that. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's that's what happened with Game of Thrones and um, Walking Dead. Like, Sundays were, oh, God, no. Because <laughs> you had to, like, because I, I don't have HBO or Showtime, so I would watch it to go. Like, I would wait to oh, like, yeah. get online, and it wasn't always the same day. And so, yeah. So, I, I mean, I guess that's a good segue for Game of Thrones for you, Eric. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so we've got about a month. I think April 24th is the date until, what is it season six now? Are we on six sure, or five? Sure, sure. Sure, whatever. Why not? Uh, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, the trailer is out. Um, are you guys are you guys pumped or are you, are you over it? Are you still on the Game of Thrones train? You know what? I, I, wrote, a, I wrote a story about this great mashup that an artist did of Dr. Seuss, redone, like Game of Thrones retold through Dr. Seuss style. <laughs> and it, I, as silly as that sounded, that got me super excited for the next season of Game of Thrones because I'm like, oh, I miss the dragons and I miss like the characters Aww. and I miss the bloodshed and I miss like the deaths of characters that I don't want to die. And I don't know. I kind of miss the drama. I feel like I'm missing drama in my other shows that I watch. And Game of Thrones and Walking Dead are the two shows that I always watch for the, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. You know, because that doesn't really happen in other shows. Like, it happens in these. Yeah. The trailers they put out aren't very good, though. Let me see. this. That's not a very good one because it's just him. This is a good you one. You know nothing, Jack Snow. Okay. Yeah. I choose violence. <laughs> 
The music, though, like oh, I know it's a little Dan Fogelberg. So it's evocative, people. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's so cheesy. <laughs> but everyone's tripping out because Jon Snow is still in the trailer. So. Guess at least it's not Coldplay. We'll see what happens. Well, and, and the actor Kit Harrington is—he's been spotted on the set, right? Yeah. yeah. Or near the set, or at least in the cafeteria. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think he's gonna be talking to his brother. Bran, what's his name? Bran? Is that his brother's name? Sure. I his name. Is that wicked game they're playing? Yes. Like a horrible cover of it. Wow. <laughs> Great games. Dinklage. I guess because it's hosting SNL. Game of Thrones. Wicked game. Side or there will be violence. I choose. I choose violence. It's super effective. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting how these trailers are using old songs because Penny Dreadful, I watch, I'm addicted to Penny Dreadful and season three is coming out soon. And they just did a trailer for Penny Dreadful on Showtime and they used, uh, I think it was like an old 50s song, like You Don't Know Me. Oh. That huh. You Don't Know Me, you know that song? But they did it in the same kind of slow, gritty indie way. I do love that last scene right there. Yeah, that was great. I've never been much yeah. of a fighter. Apologies for what you're about to see. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I mean, there's oh. about a million loose threads works worth that need wrapping up. What about you, Stephen? You seem psyched. Yeah, I'm very pumped. I can't wait. My wife. That's like the one show my wife and I like sit down and watch at the end of every night. So yeah, I'm really stoked to see. And you know, who knows what's gonna happen to the dragon? To the dragon woman? She's the last. She was left on the side of a mountain. By her dragon. It happens. Last we know, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Where else is a dragon gonna leave you? <laughs> there's there's a really funny video on online right now, which I don't think we've covered because it's really not safe for work. But it's, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Gwendolyn Davis, who plays uh, Brienne of Tarth, uh, got pulled on stage last week uh, at a Madonna concert. And <gasps> oh yeah, just check it out because yeah, I've they, seen it. They have like a banana sword fight. Yeah. And, it's pretty awesome. It, it's a lot of swearing, but it's yeah. really funny. Banana Sword Fight is going to be the next name of my band. God, I hope Madonna. <laughs> I hope Madonna doesn't. That doesn't mean we're going to see Madonna on Game of Thrones. That could happen. No. If Lady Gaga can be in American Horror Story, Ruin I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is there anything else that's coming out like Ghostbusters? I'm super stoked for, but I feel like we got a ton of Ghostbusters news and then it went quiet. You like yeah, we got I mean, like right. we got the, the, the trailer. Link. The trailer was so underwhelming that really I liked people, the trailer. Yeah, it was just like really slow and no, it, it almost like gave away too much. Of Dude, the movie. I liked the trailer so much I did a gallery of every single freaking screen grab. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, that's probably my fault. It's just babe. so slow. I mean, look right there, it stop forever. right there. That's the old that's the old headquarters. That brick right. building. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, that's <laughs> you know that's clear. We, we that's cool. That. Well, a lot oh. of people don't know that. I'll go just to see Leslie Jones in a movie. Yeah, she's gonna be awesome. Sure. I just want to see that. I want to see that at Bart Station. Okay, well, did you see the 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 trailer that the fan recut? Yes, yes, you yes, did see it? yes. So much better. I don't know. I like this one. <laughs> God, you cool. guys, Ghostbuster haters. I'm not a Ghostbusters hater. I'm All right. Fan. I'll go see the movie. Seems, just a bad trailer. My name is Aaron Gilbert, Doctor of Particle Physics. <laughs> I will say the the number one. The number one thing that got tumbled, tumblered the most, <laughs> was um, Kate McKinnon's wink. Oh, so yeah. Kate McKinnon's like the cool tank girl type engineer that basically gives all the old gadgets, the proton packs and all that stuff, a revamp. She turns one of them into a great bear trap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like this. You'll see it. Look at her. Look at that. That's tank girl right there. Bear trap. Wink. So people gift that or yeah, something? Yeah, and then people gift that math, the physics. Like, people are like, what the hell's that physics? <laughs> that wink right there. That wink got tumbled so bad. Like, it was like a Cumberbatch tumbler. <laughs> it was, like, worse than the Cumber Bunny Easter chocolate bunny story thing that I did, which you think would take over Tumblr because it's Cumberbatch in chocolate form as a rabbit. But no. You want to watch the fan recut video? Yeah, okay. Okay. Ah. <laughs> oh. It's because of the music, isn't it? And better pacing. It's a class for operation. That's okay. She's because fans do everything better. We have dedicated our whole lives.
life to studying the paranormal. Now there's sightings all over the city. We can provide a real service. I see what they did there. They brought in Slimer right away. Let's go. Oh, oh. Did you want to? Sorry. sorry. I'll let you. I'll let you. Next time. Okay. So good. Yeah. Better. You're right because it's a lot quicker. It's Ray Parker Jr. Brought, every time. The music, the music, the music was, does it. Did it for me. The yeah. music does it. They brought in Slimer right away, yeah. which is what all the fans were super stoked for. And the ghosts, though they didn't show all the subway ghosts, which I think is a great shot of all the blue ghosts waiting yeah. at the subway. I mean, in the, in the, in the, you know, we live in a time of YouTube where everyone wants a really quick. short video. Everything's quick. The trailer they released was two minutes and 40 yeah. seconds. Yeah, that's because yeah. all millennials are like basically meth babies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Like, nobody can sit still for anything ever. You have to be able to see ever. the whole trailer while scrolling through yeah. Facebook. It's like, I want to see it in 360 all at once right now, <laughs> right now, right now. Yeah, that's the you problem. Edit this, you edit the Cravecast down to 90 seconds, right? Steve? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm no, be, he doesn't I'm even do that anymore. The show today. He just makes a big GIF out of it. It's just we're, an animated GIF at this point. Actually, you guys, this would be shocked. Vine, right? you guys would be shocked at how fast I get this thing out. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that takes the longest is just the encoding. I mean, there's just something to be said. I mean, I think we've done some we've done some CNET articles about how lazy millennials are, that they want everything quickly and fast to the oh, point yeah. where they are no longer eating cereal. They're eating cereal bars because they're too... Yeah. <laughs> It takes too long to put the cereal in the bowl and then the milk and then the spoon. You got to wash it. And then you got to wash it. If, if you just have a cereal bar, you're done. Like, that's that's basically what it's boiled down See, to. See, I'm not a oh. millennial, and that still sounds like way too much effort. <laughs> yeah. I'm like getting out of bed, putting on pants. I don't know. Some of us still eat over the sink at this point, so. So I need a Pee Wee Herman style house to dress you. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's not really a superhero movie, but the new Pee Wee's out. It's Pee Wee's Holiday. It's on Netflix now. I made a comment on Twitter that I thought it wasn't as good as Pee-wee's Big Adventure, mainly because Pee-wee's Big Adventure had Morgan Fairchild and Godzilla and Santa and Twisted Sister, and this new one does not have any of those people. Yeah, that's yeah, a that's a hard that's a hard movie to beat, though. I mean, but it's a this classic. this movie, just like Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Pee-wee's Big Vacation. Did I say mystery? I meant Pee-wee's Big Vacation. It would be great if you did a crime movie. Maybe I'll do that next. I'm hoping for a space the movie next. I want Pee Wee. Hard boiled Pee Wee. I want Pee Wee in space. <laughs> Hard boiled Pee Wee. Um, there's a great Rube, uh, Rube Goldberg contraption in in this new Pee Wee movie. So, and it's got Joe Malignaglio. Joe Manigla, Joe well, Maganilio. From uh, Magic, I like all those guys. Magic Mike. From Magic Mike and from what's the other movie he was in? Probably some gladiator movie or something, right? <laughs> He's a big guy. He's a big guy. And it's weird how their friendship is in the movie. I'm going to say right now, the movie made me feel a little uncomfortable. It's just like <laughs> young, Pee-wee felt, young Pee-wee felt like there was some like whimsy in those movies from the yeah. 80s. Well, that's and Tim now Burton. it, that's now it just feels like a weird, creepy movie. Now it <laughs> seems slightly, I don't want to say pedophilic, but it's it's a little creepy. <laughs> So to wrap things up, we're running over time. <laughs> sorry. But, uh, sorry. <laughs> Way to end it on I a know, happy note, Bonnie. Sorry. No, no, I refuse to end on Pee Wee is the thing. <laughs> so uh, it, to, to take us out, um, Stephen, can you play the uh, Independence Day uh, resurgence, Independence Day 2 trailer? Oh, yeah, and sure, then just yeah, really quickly, it. we can give it a thumbs up I or thumbs down. I'm trying to figure out which one is the correct one. Hang on. So this is uh, Independence Day 20, 20 years later. Without Will Smith. Without Will oh, Smith. this is the original one that I found just for reference for us but here here's the yeah. this is some cheesy like youtube okay thing here we go in a world <laughs> sound effects you've heard before i'm batman Something only you might understand. Cold blue. <laughs> oh my God. I spent 20 years trying to get us ready for this. We used their technology to strengthen our planet. But it won't be enough. 
see them in my dreams. They're coming back. They could only get Bill Paxton's voice over. <laughs> Expecting like a Will Smith like joke to pop up. No, this is oh, this is both this is, BS. A, this is a dark and gritty Independence <laughs> yeah, yeah. Day. Looks scary. This is so, some awards president. Yeah, <laughs> is, is she? Because yeah. I'll I vote for her. I wish she was president now. I'm cool with this cast. I don't care about. I don't need Will Smith and everything. I'm cool <laughs> it, with this cast. It's a wait for Netflix. It's totally a wait for Netflix. I don't know. Sorry. Well, I don't go see movies in theaters unless there's a Wookiee or a superhero at this point. So, or Eva Green. Like, I'll go see Miss Peculiar Children of Weirdness. What was that called? Yeah, <laughs> we'll Miss... go with that. <laughs> yes, sure. No, <laughs> it's called Miss Peculiar, Miss Pedigrees. <laughs> No, no. And that's all the time we've got for the Cravecast. <laughs> oh my god, I'm ruining everything. Okay, uh, so I will I I won't go see this in theaters, but I give it a thumbs up for Goldblum. Because yeah. I oh, love yeah. him and anything. He makes Portlandia better. I mean I love that guy. And it's good to see Pullman in a movie because I'm hoping that we get, you know, another Mel Brooks movie with him in space <clears throat> soon. So I'm cool with the cast. I like the cast. Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not gonna go see it necessarily. All right. Somebody said, "Hey, let's go see it." Yeah, whatever. Yeah. What about you, Steven? I, I probably won't go see this. If like maybe if it's an accident, if like I don't know, family or something. <sighs> okay, fine. Like, I'll, I'll be alone something. in the theater. I kind of feel. <laughs> I kind of feel like it's you know like now the sequel that no one really Wanted. asked for, but yeah. we're giving it to you anyway. Yeah. I mean, I'm uh, sure it's gonna be fun, but like I don't really have like any kind of like huge attachment. To the world of Independence Day. Yeah, it does seem weird that they're doing this now. Like, there wasn't, like, this big fan outcry that there wasn't a sequel to it. Yeah. But, I don't know. Also, I'm, you know, like, if the ship in the trailer is bigger than the ones that were there before, I, yeah. I don't see how that's I mean, they're doing a sequel to... ruining the Earth just from, you know, gravitational force. Yeah. Anyway, but... I mean, they're doing a sequel to D-War, which is that dragon movie that no one watched. So, I guess you can do a sequel to anything. They're just trying to unify... The world, the planet, <laughs> all the Earthlings on the planet right now. Get us all behind. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. At this point, we have so much reboot, like revival and remake frenzy that I'm not really shocked anymore when things have yeah. come up like that. Yeah, so, yeah. Totally. We just had Gem. I mean, come on. <laughs> we had Gem in the Hollywood. Oh, it was horrible. <laughs> horrible. It gets better, you guys. There's only two years till Blade Runner 2 and three years until Indiana Jones 5. Uh, and so... Oh, you would say that. <laughs> There is there is hope on the horizon, oh, maybe. God, Indiana Jones and the Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, everything's ready for the moonlight, but but we found some weird signal. Uh, we don't know what, because you figure the timing would be almost right. I just hope it? I just hope there's a wheelchair chase. That would be awesome. <laughs> I know. Indiana Jones and the damn hippies. At, I know. Uh, would get, get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah. I Indiana can't Jones wait. versus Medicare. It is going to uh, be in Blade Runner will be interesting though because Deckard was supposed to be a replicant and he does not look like Deckard anymore. So hopefully they explain that one. Well, Blade Runner is set in 2019, and so Blade Runner Two will come out in 2018, <laughs> which that makes it kind of interesting because the computers that we have now are actually more advanced than what they had in the original Blade Runner. But like everything else, you know, flying cars. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, know, we're never going to get flying cars. Yeah, never. Never. Man, another down note. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's all the time we've Sorry. got for the Cravecast. Game of Thrones is only a month away. 
Um, go see Batman versus Superman this weekend. Let us know what you think at Crave on Twitter. And definitely check out everything that we've talked about at CNET.com slash Crave. For Bonnie Burton, Jeff Sparkman, and Stephen Beecham, I'm Eric Mack. Thanks for watching the Crave cast, and we'll see you in April. Ha <laughs> ha